However, notice that this is just telling us about the entropy of the universe. So we're not saying that the system's entropy can't go down. It's possible that the system's entropy could go down, but only if the surroundings entropy goes up by at least as much. So that's a common mistake that people make and a common uh, trap on exams. This is not, so this is not tell us that the entropy of the system is always going up. Uh, it's perfectly possible for the entropy of the system to go down, but only if that is at least counterbalanced by the entropy of the surroundings. Mm -hmm. So one problem that a lot of students have is they just write down delta S without the subscript. Very often it's very helpful to write down a subscript. Am I focusing on the system, the surroundings, or the universe? The second law focuses just on the universe. It doesn't say that the entropy of any individual part can't go down. Mm -hmm. So let's see what handout has to say about that. One sec. So now I think we've covered the next portion of the handout. We saw how you can split the universe up into the system and the surroundings. Mm -hmm. The second law of thermodynamics just is about the entropy of the whole universe and tells you about reversible and irreversible processes. And we, we should watch out for the trap of confusing the universe with the system. Entropy for a system could go up, but that means that the entropy of the surroundings, um, I'm sorry, entropy of the system could go down, but only if the entropy of the surroundings mm -hmm. more than counterbalances that. All right, now I think we're ready for that tea time. Okay. I already had, um, yeah, this one. what's that? You, had, you already had this. Yeah. Right? Okay. Initially, so initially the kettle at 77 degrees Celsius has a lot of hand steam in it. Both at 77 degrees Celsius, is that correct? You would think that it would have both water and steam. Okay. That's right. Okay. I think that's a fair interpretation. So I guess we can, I mean, we know what the Q for the phase change is. Right. Because that's just 
Yeah, that might be a good idea. That's always a good idea. So should I just do that here? Sure. And do we assume that the snow is like a, a what's it called? I don't know if the right word is like the reservoir, so the, the temperature of the snow won't Yeah, won't we are basically going to be doing that. That's right. That's okay. good. Um, So let's label, where's, what's the initial point for the well, steam? Okay. Yeah. So the initial point is somewhere on that flat portion, mm -hmm. and it's going to end on that flat portion. That's right, because what was the question asking us? The question's asking how the heat it takes to convert the two kilograms of steam at 77 degrees Celsius to water itself to 77 degrees Celsius. That's right. They actually, as you're noticing, they actually specifically included water at 77 degrees Celsius. Yeah. As we talked about when we looked at these uh, phase diagrams before, we said you want to focus both on phase and on temperature. And in fact, rather than putting the dot in the middle, I think we're dealing with all the steam. The steam initially contained two kilograms, and they want to condense all the steam. So we should actually say, that the initial point for the steam is over here, where it's all at steam at 77 degrees Celsius, and the final point is going to be here, where it's all water at 77 degrees Celsius. Now, the thing that confused you is that it's true that in real life, its temperature will continue to decline after that. This isn't the final point uh, in real life, but it's the final point in what the question is asking us about. Yeah. So we want to treat that as the final point for this question. Okay. And that simplifies our life a lot. Um, so then I guess it's just um, Q equals that. Mm -hmm. Good. So it's 4 tenths of the centimeter of the sixth Good. We know that the mass was 2 kilograms, and they gave us the latent heat. Positive or negative? Um, it should be negative. Good. I, I guess I shouldn't have said come out because when we talked about this formula previously, we said this formula only tells us magnitudes. I, I like to put the dot here to show this is only magnitudes. It's our job to put in the right sign. So you can see how people could easily lose credit on this problem for putting in the wrong sign. Yeah. But the instructor actually told us specifically take care of the sign. So there's no excuse for not thinking about that. So it's our job on our own to realize that this is releasing heat. You can see that because it's moving to the left. So this should be negative. Mm -hmm. Now, 
Let's focus on the subscripts. Is this the, the cue of um, the universe or the snow or the kettle? It's the cue of the kettle. Right, I guess I didn't phrase that. I guess it should be the cue of the steam, is what I wanted to say. The kettle isn't really playing a role here. But anyway, this is the cue for the steam. Okay, so uh, it's good that you thought of using the heating curve, but we always want to actually label the initial and final points. And here we saw the final point was not didn't involve any temperature changes because the question is only asking us about the condensation process. Mm -hmm.